What is up everybody? Star Wars Dad back for another video. Today we're kind of shifting gears away from soft control and getting into a fun deck, uh, Boss Green. This is a deck I've been kind of messing around with for a couple weeks now, but I feel like I have this list where I, I really like it and it's a lot of fun and it's very competitive. Um, so Boss's ability allows you to deal one damage to a unit with a bounty at any point in time for free. So on turn one, you can play, you know, if they play like uh, a Death Star Stormtrooper, you can play a Bounty Hunter's Quarry and immediately kill their Stormtrooper and then get a three drop unit on the board. So that in itself, like Bounty Hunter's Quarry is the reason that you play this deck. Like it's the card that is crazy good. So the fact that you can do that on turn one is really good. And then of course the fact that when Bosk has flipped over, which it flips over pretty early, it's a pretty beefy leader at 4-6 on 5 resources, which is not bad. And the fact that you get to get those bounties twice on its flip turn is crazy good if you're able to get a Bounty Hunter's Quarry twice. That pretty much just takes the cake and puts the game very far in your favor. Um, obviously, Bosk also has great synergy on its flip turn with Overwhelming Barrage, which is what makes this deck very strong as well because I still think overall my barrage is probably the best card in the game um, so as far as bounties besides the bounty hunters quarry so we have a lot of units that are pretty low to the ground so that bounty hunters quarry can find something every time I think I've only missed things one time so we have three Dengar so Dengar is a good turn one play that you can pair with bounty hunters quarry so you play it first and then you play Bounty Hunter's Quarry, which would deal one damage to the unit, and then you deal, uh, then you use boss ability so you can kill anything with two HP on turn one, if that's the case. Uh, as well, you know, you could do a guild target as well on turn one um, with the Dengar and kill a two powered unit. So that's a very good play as well. Guild target is really, really good in here just because you can play it whenever. Um, it also has great synergy with Darth Maul later in the game where you just play it on a unit and then ambush in with Darth Maul and get in for a bunch of damage to close out the game, which is one of my favorite plays to make with Darth Maul is the guild target play. Um, then we have three Kylo's tie, Kylo's tie silencer. So it's just a very good turn one play. Um, good in space. Vader can get it with its ability, which is what we want to do as well. Then turn two, we're either playing consortium to deal with a space unit to ambush in, or for playing against aggro, we want to have that subtle life gain early. Uh, Phase Dark Trooper is another turn two option. It's also very good to ambush in uh, on a cheaper unit so that it lives and becomes a 4-4 Sentinel. Uh, Laser Tech is obviously a very good play on turn two as well, um, so that we can ramp into Bosk the following turn. This allows us to keep up with the aggro decks like Sabine, and a lot of times it allows us to just kind of take over the game because if we if we go laser tech uh, the following turn we will be into bosk and if we go bosk into overwhelming barrage that's usually enough to just change the course of the momentum of the game especially if we had a bounty hunter's quarry on turn one um those two plays in them in themselves are just very strong uh, we have we have a very good matchup against aggro like it it goes well most of the time there's definitely times where aggro just gets the things that they need and i'll kind of talk about that but that's uh in general it's been favorable and I, i've really been surprised at how well it's done um boss ability to do damage to you know with bounty is really sweet and we have a good amount of ramp in here and uh you know timely and ecl just will really do work so then we have two reputable hunter um i think two is fine it's it's a it's a decent body you can play it for two resources at any time you have a bounty on the field and i think it trades favorably with a lot of the aggro units in the format that have three uh hp so it's it's just solid you can't get it with vader is the one downside so i could see you being like i want something else in that spot but it's been fine i think two is fine and i just i like having another you know three resource unit to get with the bounty hunters quarry three punishing one of course has a lot of synergy in here with the bounty so you attack in with it first and then once a unit that has a bounty has been defeated it becomes ready again so that's just another way to push damage which is really nice uh we just played two Django fett um i like Django fett 
but what I've found is that I don't always have the bounty at the right time. I think Jango Fett, if it had four power and like five toughness or something instead, I think I would I would use it all the time because but what happens is by the time I get Jango Fett out there, I really want it to be that six six with the bounty ability, but it um you know, a lot of times the bounty's not out there. So when the bounty's out there, we're absolutely ECLing and Django to kill something, killing Sabine, whatever. But, you know, that it, it's just kind of awkward sometimes, so two feels right, because it's still very good in certain moments to draw cards and things like that, but a lot of times it's just a 3-6, so. Um, Overwhelming Barrage, of course, is one of the key cards in the deck to flip when you get to the Bosk turn. Just flip Bosk, then do six damage to their board. It's very powerful. Um... Another very good play on the boss clip turn is Traitorous to just kind of steal whatever units. I mean, this is where aggro just. This is where we have a good matchup against aggro is the three Traitorous, too. So, like, just stealing their units. Um, there's a lot of decks right now that are pumping up units. So, Traitorous is just. Traitorous, I feel like, is one of those cards that you really need to consider playing it if you're not playing it in a green deck. Um, at the very least, one to two copies, but I, I put it up to three. And actually, right now, the list is at 51 cards, and it remains to be seen which card needs to be cut. I'll kind of, it takes more testing, but 51 cards, again, I've talked about this before, it lowers your odds of from 6% of hitting a card to 5.88% as far as the odds of hitting a card randomly in your deck. But we also have Bounty Hunter's Quarry in here, which is kind of like uh, Recruit, in a sense, and we get it randomly, and we can get it twice with boss if Bosk is out. So, it does not hurt us to play 51 cards in here, not by any means. But Traitorous has just been brutal. Um, um, I so the story with this deck is I I was trying out Palp Red just to try it out to see if it got any better with Great Dragon, and it just it just cannot beat Aggro consistently. So I just have put that deck on the back burner for now but one of the decks that i played against was boss green and i was just like you know I, like i said i've thought about this deck for a while i've toyed around with it and, and it really just made me be like wait a minute traders does make a ton of sense in boss green so then i i put traders in here and it's just this deck has been great <laughs> it's just like it was like the card that was missing from my original list with boss um the two kylo has been nice too. It's a good ECL card to swing in for eight damage. It can kill a lot of things. The only reason I'm not playing three is because I would rather play three Vader and three Maul just because they ambush in every time, whereas Kylo is reliant on a timely or an ECL. Um, Barrage is really going to be our card that deals with leaders, you know, because Bosk flips on that turn. Kylo is just really nice to deal with a big unit that has higher HP. So it's nice to have in here, but we do have to have an ECL or a Timely to make it as effective. Three Vader. So Vader, of course, is very nice in here for getting those a lot of those three drops. Kind of the theme is to get three drops with Bounty Hunter's Quarry and Vader. So we have early game with Bounty Hunter's Quarry and late game with Vader. So that's really nice. And then three Maul. Maul is going to be a removal slash just a closer for this deck, um, especially with the guild target play, of course. Um, I like having a 3-3, and that's actually why I have two Palpatines return in the side, because we have Kylo, Vader, and Maul. So I think that's a card I'm bringing in against heavy removal decks to get those guys back and immediately play Vader again to try to replenish the board, kind of like a U-Wing almost, with a Vader slash another unit to just keep using it. It might even be need to be three Palpatines return, but we do have Crate Dragon as well for control and Relentless for control, so that's kind of my thinking right now is... Um, a little bit of each of those. And then the two reinforcement walker has been really nice um, because we do ramp up so well. I originally had Crate Dragon in the main board, but I didn't feel like I needed it. I, I felt like Darth Vader and Maul in this deck just do a really good job of what I need them to do, which is just close the game out quickly. Because um, we do get to seven resources fairly quickly in here. But it's been a super fun deck. I think it, like I said, I think it's very competitive. I think as far as weaknesses go, I mean, opposing um, players having traitorous is a weakness for sure. That's a card that's been 
um, hard for for this deck to deal with at times. Um, definitely, I would say hard control is going to be tough no matter what. Because um, especially because we're not like, I mean, we do have the bounty hunters quarry early, but we have to they have to have a unit for us to benefit from that. So like hard control is going to be harder if they're just not playing any units because then we can't get the effects of our bounties. Um, by the way, it's also very sweet to do 6 damage with a guild target when Bosk is active. So that's also really fun. Um, in the sideboard, we have 2 Disabling Fangfighter for some of these upgrade decks, 2 Ruck to deal with Crate Dragon, and other big unit decks. Uh, just as another additional card, like if, you know, especially if Traitorous is not as good, then bring in a Ruck in that slot if the matchup you know, is bigger units. Um, the two Palpatine's Return is going to be for hard control or just heavy removal decks. Probably probably some mid-range as well. Relentless is for control. Crate Dragon's for control. And probably some mid-range matchups. Um, but yeah, it's a super fun deck. I think... I know a lot of people have been excited about Bosk. And um, I, I was excited about it too. I just couldn't find the right list. But I feel like this is a really good starting point. I've, like I said, I've been working on this list periodically for the last two or three weeks so definitely give this one a shot let me know what you think any cards that you think i should consider that aren't in here is always appreciated i'm i mean i'm all about improving the lists uh but as always please like and subscribe make sure to comment on the 2000 subscriber giveaway with the decks that you're most excited to play with this new set and Without further ado, though, let's get us. All right, up against Boba Green. Not the ECL version, which is interesting. Uh, no, no mulligan. I like the Bounty Hunter's Quarry. I think that's a really good card. If we're playing that, it's just kind of... We definitely want to play Kylo in turn one. Can we let the reputable hunter go? I could play, I mean, the thing is, I could have like a Dr. Evazan, which is amazing, but just we can't kill it right away. This is awkward. This card is just so good. It just gives us an advantage. So. Okay. That's not bad. We can play Dengar Bounty Hunter's Quarry here. And then Consortium Barrage the next two turns. I guess, let's just try it. I mean, I really just want to play this card. It's best when you have these two as your turn one plays. Well, let's just swing in first. Okay, let's play that. Play this on there. Yes, he could have McClunky, is definitely true. No. Okay. Traders is pretty strong too in this matchup. Vader's obviously very good. Um, it's unfortunate because we're just like in a weird spot with the cards that we have. Like, I don't want to not play something this turn. Next turn, we're probably going to barrage. I guess we'll let traders go. I don't want to, I don't want to give up Vader, that's for sure. Um, we're just going to do its ability. No. Um, we're going to get a laser tech or a reputable hunter. 
I like ramp for Vader. Three, two, play. Okay, sweet. So it's a pretty strong Vader turn. You can play Guild Target Barrage here. Or not, not Vader turn, but pretty strong Boba Fett turn since they don't have any units on board. Okay, we can barrage our boy here for five. Which seems like a good idea. Five damage, okay. He's gonna barrage us back, which is interesting. So he can do six damage. So what's he gonna kill? Consortium? Three. Two on Dengar. Interesting. Um we're gonna go five face. So you can't kill Vader anyways. Um I'm gonna kill that. Kill target that. Uh we're gonna swing in. Uh deal damage. No. Then we're gonna do this and attack into his face and pass. And he's dead. Okay, cool. It was worth it. So now we have Vader. Don't need Dengar anymore. Still have UCL. See what our opponent does. He could have Fetz Fire Spray or Traitorous. Which is very convenient, isn't it? Okay. Um, yes. No. Here we take our three. Claim initiative. target right now. We really just need to um, swing in. Take our five. Okay, we ambush out this. Kill that. Han Green. Got a good amount of ramp. Price on your head isn't bad. Um, Traitors isn't bad. Probably let Dengar. Dengar Laser Tech go? I mean, we could double ramp next turn, though, with price on your head, which is pretty disgusting. So, that seems good enough to give it a shot. See what happens since we're playing against a ramp deck. Oh my goodness. We can just kill it now with Bosk, unless he McClunkies himself. Price in your head is really good in here. Wow, isn't that nice? You just happen to have a confiscate in your hand? Come on, man. Come on, dude. Stop it. Stop it. Who 
Clay's Confiscate main board. Bounty Hunter's Core is good here. Um, could also play Traerus. See what they do first. Since we have Bosk in play this turn, I think a Traitorous is pretty good tech. Uh, it has five. Um, really don't want them to start smuggling things. Our other option is just to kill it with Timely and Phase Dark Trooper. Seems good. in your head. We don't really need it at this point. I think this turn we want to trade as Bounty Hunter Scory. We have Vader next turn. We have Kylo as another option here. Uh, I'm just going to swing with Dark Trooper first before we do anything. Looks like they're bringing out Han, possibly Ewing. Ewing is fine because we have Traitorous, okay. Um, we'll put down this first, because he has to attack into Dark Trooper. Which we can then kill with Bosk, get a free unit, and then Traitorous another unit. Is the plan. Ideally, if it works out. Unless he has another confiscate in his hand. Get to collect two bounties. Um, potentially. Not sure how that works if Bosk dies. Okay, well, doesn't matter now. Okay, um, interesting choice. Um, I am gonna just traitorous it because we have Vader. Okay. So he's at five. He has some, definitely something he could play here. We need Kylo at this point. Definitely Vader into Reinforcement Walker is a good curve. Okay. Um, yep. We're going to get... Uh, Punishing One just dies. It's fine, though. At least it's not to our face. Um, it does make him active. Yes. Okay. Alright, first we're going to get um, three or less. We'll get a. I guess a consortium. And a. Consortium. It seems like a really good flip turn for us. Bosk's ability is very good when you can do it like that. Okay, what does that do? Choose a friendly unit. If it has Sentinel, give him experience. Otherwise, it gains Sentinel for this turn. Okay. 
what has Sentinel for this turn. Um, doesn't say which one has Sentinel. Well, let's just... Is it 5, 7? Yeah. Okay, so that has Sentinel for this turn. Okay. Um, no. I don't really want to lose Bosk just right now. Yeah, Maul is better. Sorry, what just happened? Oh, no. Maul can take the damage, that's fine. One of our consortiums can trade with the Marauder. Okay, sure. He kills... What? Vader or Boss? I don't know. Okay, sure. Kill Marauder. Then we're just gonna go. F um, he'll probably claim initiative, right? No. What just happened? He just undid his last action like 47 times. My bad. Okay. I'm very confused right now. Um, shouldn't we just claim the initiative actually? I think we should actually just, but it, we already we already did this, so we're just gonna stick with it. Okay. Okay. Whatever. We lose another unit, but we have things, so it's fine. He has to kill Maul. I mean. We know he has various forms of... I mean, we're just trying to go face right now, because he's trying to play defense. That Bounty Hunter's quarry turn was a very good turn. That's a good card. But we're still just going to do what we're doing. What can he get back? Falcon, I guess? Yeah. Okay, Leia, interesting. Um, yes, actually, that's an amazing card because we can timely in our reinforcement walker next turn. I think the game is freezing. sure what's happening okay so anyways our opponent killed boss which is fine um we're at nine we could timely kylo or timely um yeah i like the idea of timely timely uh Timely reinforcement marker seems really good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. Kill. Uh, yes. Gotta love reinforcement walkers, right? Okay, sure, sure, sure. Um, gonna go face. He 
he's killing consortium, I guess. Yeah, we definitely want to draw that. That's an amazing card to find right now. Okay, he's bringing in something. Um, we'll put that on there. And claim the initiative. You wing, okay, cool. Barrage is going to be huge next turn. The thing that trying to think of what cards he could get that would be a problem. We're going to be able to do 8 damage, so... Um, okay. So we'll do 4. Kill Echo Base. Kill Tech. I mean... Yeah. the turn. Okay. Hmm. So if we barrage, we can play Dark Trooper and Kylo. I think we're just gonna sit tight. So you can definitely smuggle like another home one out. Other option is Barrage plus two Dark Trooper, which is pretty good. Or Barrage plus Kylo, yeah. Okay. All right. Of course, double. I don't know if double Barrage is the best play, but it would definitely be a good one. So we're gonna do four. There. Yeah. Kind of hit them all. Unfortunately, tech is the card that we are worried about afterwards. So we do four to home one, three there, one to tech. Yeah. Um, choose a card to play. Play. Guess it's just consortium, right? Okay. Mm. Kylo's pretty good here. He has seven resources, right? I think we just drop the, tro the troopers and go wide. He could have another U Wing in his hand. Especially because Tech only has two power. Okay, that's a card. They smuggled that and replaced it, okay. Cool.
So we go face. Then we put. Sure. Um, put a guild target there, actually, so that Vader can kill the reinforcement walker with Bosk's ability. This is a long game, man. Uh, what? He just waylaid himself? Okay. Sure. Uh, so, can we play two units here? No. Just play Reinforcement Walker and draw Barrage. Seems like a good draw. Don't need resupply, traders is solid. Alright, 12 resources. We can barrage plus Kylo or barrage plus traitorous here. First thing we're doing is just attacking him with Maul, though. He's gotta find, like, a timely again. Okay. He kills Darth Maul. Barrage is going to take care of business for us. Uh, reinforcement worker takes two, and the rest go to home one. We swing in, draw a guild target, which is good. We play Vader, pass, boom, no ambush attack. And we pass with a solid board and game in hand and another Vader. So he has to have another timely or another form of ambush or another home one. Which is possible. There's a Ewing. Okay, Traitorous is going to be good here. Vader's going to be good here. DJ. Okay, what does DJ do? It's just a 3 5, okay. Um. So, we'll go... I mean, those aren't... Yeah, Barrage is pretty good. I'll draw another Barrage. But at this point, we're just... He didn't get a Sentinel, so we just win with Vader if he doesn't have a Sentinel. Or another Ewing. He could, though. He's he's had answers this entire game. But either way, we have Barrage, so... Okay, and our opponent just disconnected. Um... I mean, like I said, the merit of that game kind of went down when the the mall guild target play didn't work correctly and get us really close to in range of winning. But I like that. I like how this deck continues to find ways to get damage in. With all the ambush effects, the guild target mall play, of course, is awesome. Overwhelming barrage is just an amazing card, and it's one of the best cards in the game, if not the best card in the game. And that's literally what kept us in favor of this game. Bounty Hunter's Quarry was really awesome in this game, too. Um, so, obviously, we're just going to attack him with Vader here to win. But if he had a Sentinel on the ground, then we would use Barrage on either Vader or Reinforcement Walker, whichever kills the whole board. I mean, Vader would have killed those three. If they had a Sentinel or another Ewing, then we'd probably use Reinforcement Walker as the Barrage target just to get in for 8 damage to clear out more things, and then we just would have cleared the Sentinels out of the way first and foremost, just so that Vader or Punishing One could have gotten in. Ewing is really the only card that could have saved him at that point, because he needed a Sentinel in the air and a Sentinel on the ground, but good game. This is playing against no beef, just party. Uh, looks like we have a solid hand. Um, good. Get good ramp into Maul. 
think we're gonna let go of I mean we could just go price in your head resupply here so I'm assuming they're gonna have a unit the problem is do we have a way to kill it probably not so we'll let that go and then could Kylo's guild target here if we play like a, a TIE fighter or something with one HP then we can kill it immediately with boss because that's a good option I think we're gonna let Maul go for now just we gotta have okay that's not really Okay, well, I'll take it. Um, Reputable Hunter isn't bad here. Especially because he has the one damage. And we want to really just want to play defense against them. We don't want their units to get huge. So he's at 4 HP, so we're just going to kill that. Just get that out of the way. Okay. Um, sure. It almost would have been worth just claiming the initiative there, but... Okay. We'll go Django here. Okay. Well, I'll just trade with that. I don't have a problem with that at all. And go face. Alright, don't need another Kylo. Um, Barrage is interesting here. There's the Phantom. Okay, so we're just gonna. I think we're just gonna kill the Phantom. Get that out of the. Get that out of the way. Barrage really isn't doing a lot here. Um, kind of think that I would rather just use its ability. We'll do barrage next turn, yeah. Traitorous is disgusting here. I don't think we need the walker at this point. Okay. Ouch. Ouchies. Yep. And that's uh, that's gonna do it for this one. Traders is so strong right now, and now we have initiative, and there is nothing our opponent can do. All right, good game. Um, yeah, I mean, from a lot of the games I've been playing lately, Traders has just been ridiculous. So, I definitely think if you're playing green, you need to be playing at least one to two Traders. Um, our hand has a lot of ramp. I like Traders, though. Traders is going to be good against them, so we can do get rid of one resupply and guild target, I guess. Bounty Hunter's quarry is important, so we can find a unit to get some units on the board. Alright, one resupply and guild target. 
Okay, so... Unfortunately, we can't play this because that's the one card that they play on turn one that they'll just remove it. Um, a second one of those is really nice. I don't think we need a resupply now. We're just going to ECL in, laser tech, and just go from there. Are we going to ECL in? What does this come out as a 4 7 on 6? Yeah. Just getting to boss faster than them is good. So we can get up to traders too. We could like boss and traders next turn, which I think is going to be pretty gut wrenching. Yep. <clears throat> do we want to do that? Possibly. I think so. I think it gives us we can trade or something else and just kill that with Bosk. We have two traders. That's crazy. Yeah, that's that pretty much. Um, that's pretty brutal for our opponent against a deck like this that wants to be cheap and play, like, upgrades. But, I mean, Traders in general has been very good. Alright, so we're gonna... Um, we're gonna Traderous... We're gonna bring out Bosk. Damn it. We're just gonna deploy. Yeah, we're just gonna deploy. Take our three, and pretty much we're gonna just take over the game after this turn right here. This is a pretty sweet play right here. So we're gonna get to activate this twice. Yes. Okay. So first we're gonna get a. Dark Trooper, or Kyla. Let's get a. Um, let's get the Dark Trooper, and then a another Dark Trooper, just to be like crazy on the ground. He takes the initiative. We play Traitors on its Mandalorian Warrior. So Bosk is now protected. Okay, sure. And then that should wrap things up. Alright, Kylo here, or we can play another bounty plus a trader, which feels like an even better play. And then we go into Maul and Okay, sure. Sure, sure. But see what our opponent does here. If they just claim the initiative, then we're just going to play Kylo. If not, then we will. Um, okay. Not worried about that at the moment. Okay. Um. Oops, undo. Let's undo that. Let's play. That was stupid. <laughs> Let's do it right here. And then um, we will attack into that and traitorous the follower. Get a punishing one, then we'll traitorous this and pass. So now we have Darth Maul to kill his guy immediately. Like, the way this game is going and how aggro the meta is, this makes me want to play three traitors. Now, obviously, not everything's going to be, like, you know, three or less resources, but it's just crazy. He has two resources, so he could have enough to have, like, a Mandalorian armor on bo so we're just going to go ahead and swing in with Maul. Um, pass on that. We'll just let Maul take the damage. Uh, 
Alrighty, um, we're gonna attack in here first in case he plays another unit. Looks like he just claimed the initiative though, so. Alrighty. Alright, now we have Reinforcement Walker plus Guild Target and Kylo. Deal 2 damage. K kills them all. Sure. Okay, um, can we kill that? We're going to swing in for 8 here. So, no, not really. Not really worried about it at this point. We just drop the big boy and draw that and play this here and do this, that, no, oh, and pass. Alrighty, pretty dominant performance there, and then we have the barrages to completely finish things off. I mean, Traitorous was brutal. I mean, and, and a lot of these games, tra Traitorous has been like the defining factor, so it's just made me kind of rethink the usage of traitorous i do i have two in here and it's felt great but it makes me want a third one especially because there's a good amount of ramp in here like you're getting to traitorous pretty often and having three in an aggro deck where we have a lot of ways to push damage just feels really really strong it might be a sideboard card but it i mean this game is an example of how brutal that card can be so back for the post game wrap up so this deck went five and one uh, the one loss was to, oh, Iden Green. It was like my Iden Green list that I just posted a few days ago. Like, it just annihilated me. Like, Snoke was just, <laughs> Snoke just took a dump on this deck. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, control, man. Snoke is, Snoke is awesome. Um, somebody was saying, I, I've seen a lot of people comment about those soft control decks I just did, saying that aggro is too fast for them. I just, I don't agree with that at all. I don't care about Poe and Wrecker. I think that those decks are really good. I think Aiden and Kira in particular are very strong decks. Aiden Green and Kira Green, that is. And I think that they have a favorable matchup against Aggro. I think you just need to play test that matchup a lot and get a feel for it. You know, time, you know, make sure you, you keep hands that make sense early so that you can't get wing leader that, you know, out of range of your removal spells and just make sure that you are smart i mean and use your sentinels you know um i just don't agree with that at all i've played that i mean i tested those decks probably 150 times against sabine like they they have a favorable matchup against sabine so but anyways back to this deck um yeah this deck was awesome i felt like it was very competitive i felt like it had good recovery it had it you know against that that han game was just a mental mentally uh, draining matchup like they, they just kept having answers i mean high green's a good deck but it just you know their ability to play like home one and ewing and home one and ewing and then smuggle things it was just it was a lot so but we i mean we came out on top i think um you know obviously the guild target thing didn't work that matchup i don't know what happened with that but that would have put us within like two or three damage from winning the following turn but i mean even with that not happening and then then immediately drawing a reinforcement walker and gaining a bunch of life with ambush um, we still were able to come back out with the victory after that so uh, it was just nice to see that this deck has the ability to to keep pushing damage to recover um, i really like that this deck has bounty hunters quarry and vader as ways to find things throughout the games so that's really nice to widen your board um, it's really nice that one is early and one is later and then obviously as the you know those type of games like that han game like we're you know using them both at that point traitorous was amazing and i would say between barrage traitorous bounty hunters quarry um even laser tech was really really strong in these games just to get boss out early but i mean i did add the third traitorous like i said just it just makes too much sense there's so many decks where it just it completely swings the momentum of the game also it's a way to get back a unit that my opponent's traitorous as if i draw into my own trader so i can trader sit back so that's important because that's definitely um that's why i lost to Iden green is because they traitorous 
uh, I can't remember what it was, uh, a reputable hunter or face dark trooper, one of the two. I think it was face dark trooper. It was just devastating. I could not recover from that. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video and the deck. Um, definitely give me your feedback or any thoughts that you have on this deck or if you've tried it out yourself, any cars that have been working for you. I always love to hear different ideas or different takes on decks. I mean, that's what's fun about this game. But as always, y'all have a good one and peace out.